Fishermen love to tell stories about the fish that got away and maybe some of them that didn't get away. And this is a fish story. It's called The Squirrel and the Bass. And it took place uh, in Wilmington, North Carolina on a hot summer day on the Cape Fear River, the banks of the Cape Fear River, which is a slow moving Blackwater River. And there was a sycamore tree growing on the banks there with old gnarly place for the fisherman to sit. And he loved to sit there and lean back against the trunk of that sycamore tree. It was just kind of a natural seat. Uh, had a, a straw hat with a broad brim and he could pull that hat down over his eyes and he could take a nap or two while he was sitting there fishing. Now he wasn't fishing for ordinary bass, you know, these two or three feet long, you know, 15, 20 pounds. He was fishing for a bass that the local fisherman called Oscar. Now this bass was so big that he had been caught, hooked several times, probably had hooks and leader wire all over his lower lip and his upper lip. But when they tried to bring him to shore, that's when he'd get away because he was so heavy. And my friend had a special way, a special lure that he liked to use fishing for Oscar. He'd take these long purple worms and he'd put two or three treble hooks in them and uh, just enough BB shot lead weight on the end to make that purple worm settle down into the mud on the bottom of the river. And as he reeled in, he would jerk the tip of the rod every now and then and that would make that purple worm slither through that mud on the bottom and no self-respecting bass could resist that lure. Well, this was a hot summer day. The flies were buzzing around and my friend was kind of alternately napping and fishing. And he heard the rustling of the leaves on a limb that was hanging out over the river from the sycamore tree. And beyond the brim of his hat, he finally saw a squirrel slowly making its way out to the end of the limb, out to the very tip small branches of the limb. And it seemed to be heading for a stump that was sticking up out of the river. And it got over that stump and tried to reach down, saw something that it wanted. And my friend couldn't quite make out what it was. And that squirrel finally started bouncing that limb up and down and trying to reach down and get whatever it was he wanted off of the stump. When he finally was hanging on by his behind legs and he let go and he plopped down on the stump and he picked up an acorn. That's what he was after. I don't know if you've ever seen a squirrel eat an acorn, but they kind of take it in their front feet and they start rotating it. And those sharp teeth chisel away that outer shell. And then when they get down to the good meaty part, that goes in one cheek and then the other cheek and the squirrel finished his meal. And with both cheeks full, he looked back toward the bank, well, which was about 30 feet away. My friend thought, big boy, how are you gonna make it back now? Well, the squirrel looked up at the limb he dropped off of. And he jumped up and he tried to grab some of those little tippy ends of the branch, and he couldn't. Without his weight, that limb had gone back up just a little bit too far for him to be able to reach. So he walked around that stump and he looked at the bank and he walked around that stump and he looked at the water and he walked around that stump and he thought, well, nobody knows what he thought. But we do know that he hunkered down and he dove toward the bank just as far as he could, which was only about three feet, and plopped down into that black, slow-moving river. And I guess he started doing the squirrel paddle anyway. His little eyes were bugged out and he was kind of making it toward shore. And my friend thought, well, he'll probably vector over to shore down there somewhere or maybe uh, come across a limb or a branch that's in the water and he'll be able to save himself. And about that time, with a huge splash, up out of the water came Oscar, that big bass, and swallowed that squirrel whole. Took him down with a big kerplunk and a geyser of water. Well, my friend remembered what he was there for and he started reeling in uh, in his line and he cast it back out over those ripples that were spreading and he reeled it back in and he cast it back out and reeled it back in and couldn't get a bite. And finally, everything kind of settled down and the water bugs started skittering across the, uh, the surface of that uh, Blackwater River. 
And then he saw a swirl over by the stump. And Oscar the bass rose up and put another acorn up on the stump. That's a fishing story, the squirrel and the bass.